Hey, my name is John. I'm a TikTok influencer with over 22,000 followers, and I'm on my journey to focus on YouTube. I'm not a YouTube expert. I am in transition, and I'm learning things every day. And I wanted to share with you some important lessons that I've recently learned having to do with music licensing for YouTube creators. So here we have four items and we're gonna go through each of them. These are some terms that you see thrown around the YouTube ecosystem sometimes. The first and most confusing for someone new to YouTube licenses is the no copyright phrase. So here we have some mixes and some playlists full of copyright free rock or so it says. In this playlist, we can see some pretty well-known bands. We can see Def Havana, we can see Cartel, we can see Thousand Foot Crutch. It almost seems too good to be true, right? Well, it kind of is. So let's click into one of these videos. And if I click the more button, you can see the license information right here. If I expand it, you can see this is licensed to UMG. So why would this appear on a list that says no copyright? Well, the answer is that you will not get a copyright strike for using it. Metallica currently holds the most played metal song on Spotify, Enter Sandman, with over a billion plays. And here you can see I'm uploading a copy of Enter Sandman. And I just changed the background image to my own. I give them credit and it gets flagged as having a copyright. But look at what YouTube tells me. Copyright protected content found. The owner allows the content to be used on YouTube. So I prefer to use the term no copyright strike but you can see in the world of social media, people want to clip characters. And so the phrase no copyright has basically become really popular for this, which is ironic because in many cases, there is a copyright. In fact, copyrights are automatically endowed to a creative work once it's fixed. The legal definition of fixed, I'm not a lawyer, but once you have a saved recording like a file, or it could be physically saved on like a cassette or something like that, it's in a recorded or fixed form, it automatically receives a copyright in the United States. Let's take a look at a playlist that I put together. I call this No Copyright Strike Rock. You can use this music in your videos and there is a combination of flavors of licenses here. None of them will give you a copyright strike. Another flavor, which is really interesting, is this concept of royalty free. Expand, look at the license, and you can see there is no license information. If there's no license information, does that mean it doesn't have a copyright? The answer is that there is an implicit copyright. As we just covered in the United States, you automatically get one. It just hasn't been registered with YouTube. And as a result, your video will not get flagged. You will not see the red exclamation mark at all here. When the red exclamation point is not here and the copyright protected content is not found, YouTube will allow you, the YouTube video creator, to retain ad revenue if you monetize your videos. So royalty free means just that. You are going to be able to retain your own ad revenue. It doesn't mean there's not a copyright, and this is a rather common practice. Creators will often say, you can use it if you give credit. Um, sometimes they don't even require that much, but I think it's polite to do so anyway. There's an interesting case here that we can see in another flavor of license from Jacob Lazat. We don't see the license information at the bottom, which makes this a royalty-free track. YouTube will not capture the copyright infringement. But here's the interesting trick. Jacob Lazat says, you can purchase my song and use it any way you want. So it's royalty free, but it's not free. He wants you to pay $20 and I happily did. So I purchased this, I'll be using it in my works and I encourage you to go support him. This is a really great song. So we now see that royalty free doesn't mean zero cost out of your pocket. It means you can retain the ad revenue. No copyright doesn't actually even mean that there is no copyright. There is another case where there can be no copyright, which is if the creator surrendered the audio to the public domain. This is pretty rare. So the giveaway that you have a royalty-free item is that there is no license section on the video on YouTube. Let's talk about remixes and covers. You can do these. Um, also, if you record a live video of someone else playing music, you can do that. You can upload it to your channel. You will get views. You might get some likes if people like it. Um, you'll get some watch time. You keep all of those things as a creator, but you may not be able to monetize unless you get an official release from the copyright holder. Fair use, a lot of people use incorrectly. So you can upload your video, you can claim fair use, but if YouTube disagrees with you, it actually doesn't matter whether you're right or not. You may get hit with a copyright strike. So I would say if you want to monetize a video, don't count on fair use. Another thing you can do if you wanna monetize your videos is create your own music. Here we are on splashmusic.com. 
This is an AI tool that I've used to create a bunch of tracks. And you can see that in the terms of use page, it talks about using recordings for any commercial or non-commercial purpose on a royalty free basis. Just like we talked about copyright holders in terms of musicians, it's also important to keep this in mind for music creation tools, particularly when working with AI or generative AI. So in summary, three takeaways. One, if you wanna monetize, look for the royalty free moniker. Two, don't be scared of copyright, be scared of copyright strikes. And three is check out the No Copyright Strike Rock playlist. Thanks for being here. If you enjoyed the video, like and follow for more.